It's, it's tabletop. Correct. Time. Oh, you, we're not at the stage where we're finishing <laughs> sentences. sentences. Thank you. Sandwiches. Yeah. That was a joke I saw on Frozen. Anyway, you've just got to let, let that just... one go. And ah, on. you beat me to it. At hey. least we're finishing each other's references. We are what? going to... <laughs> what was all of that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're painting models. Just embrace the chaos. Yep. No, we're not. Are we painting mail? We're painting we're bases. Mail? We're painting bases. Mm. And you, Dave, have a formula that you're going to teach me and us for some magic base goodness. It's the relatively simple base technique that takes a little bit of finesse and time TM. It's really marketable and easy to learn. So we're working on your custom chapter today, which is exciting because this is our first delve into something working on your custom chapter. And you'd already done a cool base for your, is it the captain? Yes. Is that what he's called? He's, a, he's the captain of the fourth company, yes. Yeah. And captain. it's a very cool base. Like it's got a little bit of resin in there. Yeah, there's like there's some like water some... effects and things like that yeah. in there that I'd used. Um, and I'm trying some different techniques to, to sort of feel my way around what the bases are going to be like with the whole army, because obviously that base took probably too long to replicate across a large army uh, a similar effect but much simpler much easier to achieve so where's it start so we have this really cool advantage of having a mdf laser cutter so we decided to grab the laser cutter and make a display disc to make a, not only a miniature diorama but a way to transport them between like the display cabinet and anywhere we need to use it but finally, as kind of like a shoot, it's a really good little setup for our turnarounds and it'll be a setup that works really well for any of my, um, my models uh, in my army. So I went out and Jeremy helped me by using his super duper awesome CAD design skills to make this circle. And we got the dimensions, we cut out 32 millimeter circles. Uh, we picked five of those. And then I asked him to do 140 mil in the center. Now the purpose of this central 40 mil circle was that we could have a interchangeable display piece that might be an objective marker, it might be a tree, it might be a character model that could then really change the dynamic of the squad and centerpiece uh, when used as a, as a display. But we also kept the piece of MDF that was cut out to use as kind of like the blank just chuck it in base for when there was nothing there. So I grabbed this Sally spack filler, which is basically a plastering uh, quick fill, hole fill, gap fill thing from a local hardware store. Uh, in uh, kangaroo bucks, it costs about $7 for a punnet that goes a long way when you're talking um, miniatures. I'm sure in other countries you could get a very similar product. I'm not sure what it would be called, but it's just spack filler rapid gap filler. I really love this product because while it does have a downside, which is it has a lot of trouble adhering to surfaces like MDF, you need to kind of like squish it in with your thumb. It is really quick to mold, gets a lot of volume really quickly and dries pretty much rock hard, but you can also get these extremely smooth finishes with it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely for me that right combination of cheap, accessible and easy and easy to use in bulk. It also dries within 10 minutes. So it's uh, very convenient for working on very rapid projects. You can also use sculpting tools to make tracks. I made a little track, I don't know what it's for, but hey, like a car track or a motorbike wheel had drowned that in and then also pushed in uh, things to make puddles uh, I imagine this is a verdant field and with shellings and footprints it would often uh, become a little bit less grassy and a little bit more muddy after some time after basing with the spec filler I just put on some simple coats Sterling Battlemire and Sterling Mud which are the games workshop texture paints for mud one of the two has a thicker texture with larger chunks of like grit in it the other one is a little bit smoother and I like to use some here some there and use both on the same bases just have a slightly variety a slight bit of variety in the texture that was simple once that's dry i moved on to applying flocks uh, shaking on a duo of flocks a, a darker green first with some pva uh, and then a lighter green on top now i did make sure to spread the PVA out a little bit sporadically. I almost stippled some of the PVA on to kind of get a slightly uneven texture and to ensure that not too much of the flock dried. I didn't want big sheets of it drying. I just wanted sort of an undergrowth and, and mushed into mud 
uh, grass look. Some of my areas of mud actually edged areas of the base. So I wanted to hem that in. So I got a hot glue gun and made like a temporary dam or gate that would stop the UV resin flowing out and then begun resin pores. Just little, little squirts from the pipette to fill out areas and allow it to get a nice wet muddy texture to lots of areas on the bases. After some time we managed to cure that resin and move on to the next step. So now we're starting to add the details. I love this because it looks like he's like stepping out of a puddle or at the edge of a, a swamp or pool. Like it's just, oh, I just love that. I kind of had pictured with my army that they'd be in the battlefield, almost like World War II in Europe with these verdant fields that are really like luscious and alive, but it's a battle mire and guys in giant power armor are traipsing through it. And as soon as it starts to rain, that would turn into mud pie. So now is the really fun bit. Tufts and mounds do so much with so little input and work. Like what you've done here takes a little bit of cleverness and trickery and figuring out what works well. Mm -hmm. I feel like with tufts and grass, it does like 80% of the work and takes like, 1% of the effort. Which is why we are delighted that this video is sponsored by Gamers Grass, who make amazing grass scenery and the tufts and stuff that we use in all our bases. Now, I've gone pretty ham in the last video <laughs> that was sponsored by Gamers Grass, where I applied a billion tufts to my uh, miniature diorama with my weird looking dude. Whereas this is much more nuanced. This is about creating a balance. And you were sort of, I'm assuming, looking through all the amazing tufts that they sent us to find the right fit for your world. Absolutely. I was absolutely delighted to go through the pile of Gamer Grass Tufts. And in that pile, I found this awesome packet that was called like the Marsh Scenics that just had four different varieties in one. And I'm like, yep, that's it, that's done. I don't need to look any further. I have my four options. And I begun to build up and attach different ones onto the bases. One thing that I really appreciate as a store owner is that Gamers Grass are very much focused on supporting LGSs. So you'll see on their website, they have a game store locator. Uh, they really actively encourage people buying from their local store and they do not sell to online retailers. So they will only sell to brick and mortar LGSs. So uh, it's really refreshing to see a company that wants to support that, those kind of practices. The last step was for the squad sergeant and he needed a little bit more of that uh, real life. He has this big puddle in front of him and I kind of pictured him almost on the banks of a small pond. So I wanted to add some vertical shrubs and there was a great, uh, well, it's called shrub uh, and it's a game of grass product. They have these nice little leaves on the top of them. And it's one of the first uh, tuft products I've seen that actually kind of looks like a real bush, which is something that's really hard to replicate with these large leaves on it. And I also chucked in a couple of flowers. Uh, I quite like at the back, he's been trampling the flowers as he's run through. And this this is, oh my God, this is my actually my first time seeing that and that is mind blowingly cool. Look at that. You so, like him? I love him. You've got the, you've got the resin little puddle is jumping over. This is an exceptional model and it's an, it's an amazing paint job before doing the bases like this, but after it's just a, it, honestly takes it to a completely new level. Yeah, and using the Gamers Grass, uh, the Tufts, it just kind of made a realistic solution to doing an army, because this is an army. And being able to quickly grab these awesome things and chuck them on and blend them and combine different elements. Because on that base, I think there's seven, six or seven different Tufts. The closer you get to the water, the thicker and taller the reeds are yeah, and all those yeah. things. So he's just storming through some <laughs> and, poor and little habitat. And you've flattened the flowers under his feet here. Yeah, I pressed <laughs> them into the ground right where his foot had just oh. been. So he's just crushed some little red flowers. It's so satisfying. And for, for people who get a lot of satisfaction out of a hobby like this from the process of making something really special and enjoyable to look at at such a small scale, there's no better way to, to really complete your presentation, I reckon. Anyway, so that's amazing. Huge thank you to Gamers Grass, by the way, for sponsoring this video. We love their products and we use them in various different ways. And this is one of the coolest and most simple foundational ways to not only use their product, but also really bring your minis to a new level. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for sharing your process. This has been really fun to go through it from start to finish and amazing to see the end results. It's really satisfying. And it's really satisfying conning you into letting me work on my army on your time. <laughs> it's fantastic. This is our time. <laughs> it's our time. See, the problem is- No, I'm it's tabletop time. It is tabletop time. Which is- No our... one will get the reference I just made what, to it. What were you doing? Sondheim musical, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he's obsessed with musicals. <laughs> we thank you, our patrons, for your wonderful support. 
It is through that support that we can continue to make the content that we hope you enjoy and that we love. So thank you all to all the patrons, especially that one. Uh, but just... What? You don't know what side Billy's going to put the scroll. Billy wouldn't cover me up. Never. Not in a million years. She goes against the our expectations every time. The scroll was over you that whole time. Was it? Yep. Was it? Yep. <laughs> Make sure to things. Make sure to edit this outro to make yeah! it good. Yeah! And add uh, po uh, special effects. Yeah, just constantly have the special effect you made for the battle report. <laughs> the whole way. Uh, subscribe! I think that went well. It's <laughs> impressive. I think that was our worst one yet. It was really bad. <laughs>